Awesome. Thank you, everybody, for making time for connecting in this member support and solidarity call. Um, we just wanted to have an opportunity to share some updates and to check in with all of you and to know how you're doing. So we're going to be sharing some resources. Um, and yeah, we're going to have some time for also connecting among each other. Um, um, once again, my name is Ana Martina. I'm the membership director of the U.S. Federation of Worker Cooperatives. And I'm here with Mo Mengling, uh, our communications director, and Kay Barut, our membership uh, coordinator. And um, what we're going to be covering today, um, we're going to do some introductions in the chat, and then later on, we're going to have an opportunity to actually have uh, breakout rooms to get to know each other a little bit more. We're going to be sharing um, some of the work that we've been doing in the last um, month, a couple weeks, and some updates. Um, and then we're going to have some space to have this uh, sharing breakout rooms to check in and to know a little bit more on how you're doing. And then we're going to have some uh, time for questions and answers uh, for the loans and relief funds and any other questions. And if you have questions, probably you can start putting them in the chat, although we're going to, you know, uh, have the, the section for questions a little bit later on the presentation. So if you haven't done yet, please uh, make sure to share in the chat your name, your workplace, your pronouns that you feel comfortable, and your location. And if you don't have access to the chat, uh, you can unmute yourself and, and share on the mic. Thank you. Okay, so let's just start. Um, as some of you know, um, in the last month, uh, the work of the Federation has been really quickly um, being turned into a rapid response to try to bring the information and updates um, related to funds uh, from the government. And we've been trying to work to put uh, the updates every week on the website. We've been sending a lot of uh, newsletters to let you know where are the resources and and we've been trying to put this information out on webinars. We also um, did a first round of calls to all of our members, and we're going to be doing a second round of calls. Um, and so if you haven't heard from us, we probably left a voicemail, but we're going to be connecting with you. Um, some of the resources that you're seeing right now on the website are, you know, the website, the web page where we have a lot of these uh, documents and links to all these uh, resources for supporting your applications. We also put together uh, a form where members are invited to share how are you continuing with your business. So I like just make it accessible if you are uh, doing sales online. Uh, some of our members also activated um, online uh, crowdfunding campaigns. So that's also accessible via the website. You can just enter your information and then it will be available on the website. Um, next one. Um, Mel um, is being mostly leading the efforts and advocacy to make sure that worker cooperatives have access to relief funds at the federal, state, and local level. And uh, this is super important as many of you who have tried to apply know that we have to do a lot of work with the SBA and with the banks to uh, educate them around uh, the needs and the specifics of worker cooperatives in order to access these funds. So this work is, uh, is kind of like a two-way, right? Like uh, thanks to your feedback and your experiences is that we can bring this information uh, to the efforts of the advocacy. So it's sort of like, you know, uh, work there. It couldn't be possible also without your feedback and also to the, you know, thanks to the direction of uh, Mom McGlynn in this aspect. Um, so we also are still offering our uh, insurance benefits. And in order to also make uh, our services and benefits uh, accessible to members, we're also relaxing late fees and extending grace to for enrolled workplaces. Um, next one. Um, in terms of the education and technical assistance that we are offering, um, we are doing a lot of programming under the co-op clinic or technical assistance uh, program. Currently, we are putting together a series of uh, webinars in Spanish. 
uh, to support businesses to assess their finances, to uh, change their projections and adapt to the current scenarios. Uh, we're going to have a webinar tomorrow to focus a little bit on operations and also, you know, from the planning of, um, you know, uh, your finances, like what are the changes that you need to do. And, um, and we're going to be doing this series in, in English pretty soon. We're also offering direct technical assistance. Uh, for the last month, we've been on the phone with a lot of you uh, going over the forms and trying to facilitate the process to apply to these funds. And we're going to be continue to be doing that level of, um, you know, webinars for general information education and then one on one uh, direct TA. Um, oh. Yeah, and I'll jump in here really quickly to talk about some just some data collection that we're doing right now. Um, many of you I know um, that are on this call have already filled this out. So thank you to everyone who is who has done that already. But if you don't know, we are um, organizing what we're calling the COVID-19 co-op experience form. And it's basically mm. uh, what we're trying to do is get a picture of what worker co-ops in particular and, and really all co-ops are, are experiencing during this time. So how are you changing operations? Um, how are you making decisions during this time? Um, did you get the, the economic injury disaster loan or the paycheck protection program? Um, you know, uh, how can we support you in this time? Um, how your workers are kind of staying in contact and, and adjusting to the crisis. Um, so we're collecting this information so that we can tell the story of worker co-ops um, in this moment and have that inform the advocacy efforts that we're, we're um, pushing for right now to make sure that co-ops have equal access to uh, relief funds. We're using it to inform programming for the rest of the year, as I know all of you are doing. Um, we are uh, re-evaluating our programs for the rest of the year and trying to figure out what is most useful right now. And, um, and and really try to figure out how to support both our membership and uh, the wider worker co-op community right now. So um, the the link, um, thank you Kate for adding that in and, and Ana Martina for adding that into the chat. Um, so please do fill out that form if you haven't already. And if you filled it out a while ago and you have some more information to share, it would be really great for you to, um, to take part. And I'll hand over to Kate to talk about uh, our dues. Um, hi, everybody. So we wanted to give you all an update. I know there's a mix of folks on this call. I know that we have uh, a lot of members joining us who are who are um, dues paying members for the Federation. And I see a bunch of other worker co-ops on the call who have yet to become members of the Federation, but just to, we're just checking in on when dues are due. Uh, we decided that because of uh, the COVID crisis and the fact that folks are in the process of figuring out what the next few months and years are going to look like for their businesses, we wanted to uh, extend an invitation to renew your membership in the way that feels best to you this year. Uh, so we're offering four options for your dues renewal this year. And normally renewal uh, dues are, uh, or membership is up on May 31st of the year. Um, and we renew during this period for, uh, for the period of June 1st, 2020 to May 31st, 2021. Um, this this year we're extending the membership renewal period or, or this membership period till August 31st, 2020. So anybody who's currently a member, your membership is up to date until August 31st, 2020. And then from then on for your renewal, you have a few different options. Um, so we're offering a dues labor trade option. If there's Something if you all have space and capacity to consider offering some some aspect of service that your business generally offers or do some sort of skill share that that we could um, Access for like an online training for other members or or any other tool that you might like to think about doing some sort of labor trade for uh, That can cover your dues this year. Uh, we also have the option of extreme financial hardship if you need a discount 
just let us know and we can talk it out and offer you that discount. Uh, there's the write-off dues options, which means that if you simply cannot afford to cover any amount of the member dues this year and don't have the space or capacity right now to offer a labor trade, that's totally fine. We can discuss a full waiver for 2020. Um, or you can choose the pledge solidarity option, which means that if your organization or your worker co-op are in a stable financial position right now, uh, you cover your dues or can uh, even offer to uh, extend an increase in dues this year to help to cover the impact of the losses and finances from other uh, members of our worker co-op community. Um, so we're gonna be sending out, if you haven't already received a communication about it, we're gonna be sending out an email to all the members, inviting you all to let us know what option you'd like to consider for this year. And basically the bottom line of this is that we're not losing any members this year. Uh, this is the time when we know we need to be, be together and, and sharing and, and, and supporting each other more than ever. Um, so membership renewal uh, this year is, is open and we're making sure that everyone can find the way to stay a part of this community. Um, and if you have any questions about that, you can send them in the chat uh, or we can talk offline. Thank you, Kate. Um, yeah, and it, it, I think that also, you know, like another, like in, in uh, labor trade, like a lot of these trainings, webinars that we are uh, putting together are part of the, you know, skill sharing that we can definitely, um, you know, just through your leadership, it could be very beneficial for members, you know, um, yeah, what are you doing? You know, you might have some skills that, that might be very beneficial for other members. So we want to take some time uh, to have a space for to check in uh, in groups, and uh, this is an opportunity to know, you know, if your member has continued on operations, you know, what are the changes, adaptations that you have, um, what are the safety measures they are you are taking to continue, what guidance are you following? There's a lot of toolkits and guides uh, in different cities and some places they are not accessible. So it will be good to know for those businesses they are continuing operations. So they're planning on opening. Uh, what are you following? What kind of guidance are you following? And what kind of support do you need? There might be also some businesses they are, you know, their, their cities might start opening and we still wanted to make sure that we're prepared and we're going to be protected in order to protect workers and clients. So um, let me see. I think Mo, you're gonna be. How are we gonna do this part for the breakout? Um, yeah, I am assigning people to breakout rooms right now, and so um, you will get automatically put into um, into rooms, and uh, we're gonna give you about 15 minutes to uh, to talk. Um, right now and then I will bring everybody back in together and yeah I think I think we're good um, I'm just adding everybody into rooms all right um, so uh, these are your breakout questions I'll also send a message to um, to everyone to reiterate the breakout questions once you're in your breakout rooms so um, yeah, uh, have fun sharing, and um, and we will see you in about. Um, and we thought that we would uh, do a couple, like like maybe like one to three highlights from the breakouts. So, um, did anybody hear anything in particular that was like particularly helpful or? Um, or particularly inspiring in this moment. Um, I'll share that I'm super pumped that the interpreter co-ops um, are gathering together um, for peer support that happened organically and as a result of everything that's happening right now. So that was a really cool development that I heard. Thanks for sharing that, Steve. Um, anything else that, that people want to share from the breakouts? I'll, I'll share something. Uh, this is Esther. Um, I think there's a lot of really neat uh, P6 like solidarity efforts throughout the country, like locally and regionally. And so it's it's I'll just say it's really nice to be on this call and just 
see what folks are doing and see if there are ways we can connect. Um, another example that, that stands out to me is um, the work between home care co-ops and groups like Isthmus and Opportunity Threads providing PP equipment to the home care co-ops. <laughs> Thanks, Esther. Thank you. Very nice to see you, Esther. Um, one thing that I want to share just really quickly, you know, and the, the, we were, you know, just going over each business and to learn what they were doing. Um, some of the things that folks were sharing, you know, it's just like the communication that they've been doing with the clients to uh, continue operations. So like one idea might be, you know, to share templates of communications that can be useful with, with clients. And then, um, uh, the other thing that came out also from uh, Meerkat was uh, that uh, in their particular industry and media production, there's been some toolkits or guides that are being put together on a specific for the industry. So then also like another idea might be to start sharing those kind of guides. It might not be necessarily just particular to worker cooperatives, but to industries and it might be helpful uh, for people. Maybe like one more. Yeah, I just wanted to uplift um, Philadelphia Area Cooperative Alliance is doing mutual aid um, study sessions. So for folks who are thinking about um, that or have wanted some space to make some space for that conversation for themselves, um, the, Jamila put the link in the chat for that upcoming webinar and um, uh yeah i think and then the cooperative fund of new england was mentioning just that folks in the new england and new york state area can access um some support with ta or questions about the ppp um from them so i just wanted to uplift those connections and and resources cool um so for the rest of the time, so we have about 40 minutes left and um, we wanted to talk about just a couple things that like everyone should know moving forward um, about so uh, particularly some of the information that we're hearing about the SBA loans and then also just, you know, what we're what the Federation is doing to like pull together resources in this moment and how you all can, um, you know, uh, take part in that or um, get your questions answered. So um, one thing that came up during my breakout was um, just a question about like the confusion around the EIDL and PPP loans. And there is, of course, a ton of uh, really hard to understand information <laughs> right now. Um, and there's a lot of like good information, bad information flying all over the place. We're trying to keep people updated. Um, one really important update that we wanted to share um, is an update to um, information we got last week was that um, so we were hearing that the um, if you got both the EIDL advance and the Paycheck Protection Program that you would have to roll that advance into your PPP loan but the new information that we received is that um, that only applies if you received an advance before April 4th 2020. So um, from my understanding, that means that those advances really only apply for advances that were received for non-COVID reasons. So um, it seems like all like any advance that was for a different disaster um, that it, I, I feel really terrible for anyone who has had to deal with multiple disasters in this last six month period. Um, but that mostly applies to those people. Um, but if you receive your EIDL advance after April 4th, 2020, then you should be all good. Um, so the advance will remain forgivable and, um, and does not need to be rolled into the PPP. So we just wanted to make that clear. We literally just heard that uh, late yesterday. Um, so we wanted to update you all. We'll make sure to include that in our um, you know, updates to our, our members. So. Um, as uh, yeah, I can't remember if it was in the breakout or, or what, but uh, we started to talk about um, looking forward, right? So some areas are starting to reopen and whether or not we would agree with that, there are 
a lot of caution precautions that need to be taken in this moment to make sure that we do this safely, as safely as possible. So um, we are starting to move towards, you know, what do businesses need to think about afterwards? So what are the, um, what are the safety guidelines that, that people should be following? Um, are there different guidelines per different state? What are people doing? Um, and make sure that we're sharing that. So I would encourage people to, um, to if, you, if you already have some information that you're following, so guidelines that you've received, um, share those in the chat. Um, Maddie, who I think is still in here, is doing some work to gather resources. Um, on that front. So um, we'll be continue to update our frequently asked questions document and the website with that information. Um, and one really important thing uh, that I want to make sure to share is that no matter what kind of business you are, you should be looking for the tax credits um, that, that you can take advantage of moving forward. So within the CARES Act, um, there were some provisions in here for tax credits um, for particularly for businesses that retain their workers and um, and and really just to support through through COVID. There's um, I know some states are doing payment plans for for the for taxes um, and some states are doing grant programs for businesses affected by COVID. So make sure that that's on your radar. Um, you'll see on the screen right now the IRS has a a whole page on the website about the new um, tax credits for employers. So um, be sure that you check that. Um, we'll be sharing all the information that we can get. Um, and uh, thanks, Barbara. I, I am hoping that, that those handouts were helpful to people in applying for the PPP. Um, I, I, one of the things that we're seeing, um, you know, is that some, some letters would only look at a employee payroll. Um, we're, we're fighting really hard to make sure that in any for future relief efforts that is really clear um, that uh, that worker cops um, and the, the way the worker cops pay their workers are included in that. So um, so please, if that's an issue for you, please be in contact with us. You can email COVID at US, uh, COVID-19 at usworker.coop. Uh, let me see. And if, what and else? if folks and if folks are still thinking about applying for the PPP and want sort of that set of templates, you can access them on their website, but you can also just like message me right now and I can send them to you. Um, the templates that help your lender to understand why worker co-ops are eligible that um, Mo designed and put together. Yeah, and um, as of right now, um, what we know is that there is still there are still funds left for the PPP loan. So um, as of Friday, there was still 120 million left. I'm sure that number has drastically decreased since then, but um, it looks like there are still funds available. So if you haven't yet and you were thinking about it, please um, please do that. Um, you can at, 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 um, if you look in the frequently asked questions document, you'll see um, where you can find lenders. Um, you, I, I'm not sure if NCB can still accept any applications at this moment. I, they might be tapped out, but you could, you should still at least reach out to them, um, and they are helping to kind of direct people towards um, other other lenders. So, um, so we have 15 minutes left, and um, we wanted to make space for people to ask questions. So um, if you have any questions, you can unmute yourself, you can type in the chat. Um, any other shares that you wanna have, you can also during, do during this time, but we really wanted to make a uh, space for any, any other questions that we can help answer for you. Um, and, and also understand what else, what other help um, do you need during this time? What could what could we um, and I, I'm when I say we, I'm the collective, like not just the staff of the federation, but the membership of the federation, um, because like we are all in this together. Like, what can we do to support each other um, and and stay in contact during this time? So, what would be most helpful, and what do you hope to say? Well, um, there's something that has been bugging me for a while because, like, I'm where our cooperative is in Alabama. Mm -hmm. um, where very few, if any, um, of the worker variety exist. I mean, there is the Federation of Southern Cooperatives, but they're, you know, they're predominantly, um, you know, the farmer variety. Um, they're there for that purpose. And some, although we're not quite at the point where we're going to need like loans and grants and so forth to get the equipment we'll need to produce uh, guitar parts, 
Um, I'm worried that given the way that a lot of the um, given the way that a lot of the um, organizations that support cooperatives in that way um, are oriented, they're very reach. They tend to be very regionally oriented, and it's very very difficult to find um, one that is willing to provide startup capital for a southeastern um, worker cooperative. Um, that's been um, that's been a real troublesome venture for us. So I was wondering if y'all had any advice, knowledge, support regarding that um, that you could provide. Yeah, sure. So um, I, I, I will say I don't have all the answers to your questions, um, but I would recommend shared capital. Um, yeah. I would recommend the National Cooperative Bank also. Um, and if you email membership at usworker.coop, um, I'm yeah. sure um, that we can hook you up. Um, on right. your case, do you have any other tips there? Um, yeah, I mean, I think Anna Boyer is on the call, like, she might know of, like, particular, like, uh, funds in, in the South. Yeah. But I don't know. I saw her in the call. I don't, I don't know. Actually, she yeah. I'm still here. I don't actually know of any funds that are specific to the South for worker cooperatives, but I was also going to say shared capital. If you're a member of shared capital, they're extremely helpful and they can also provide you, they have a share buy-in. You like, basically you start an account there um, because it is a cooperative and then you can access their, their lending tools and it's still, you know, you have to apply. So you have to have, it's a lending process, but they're extremely helpful. I don't have as much experience with the national cooperative bank personally, but I can say that shared capital is extremely helpful. Once you're a member, especially, they can also point you to other resources. So I would say right. contact both of them. Yeah. Um, We're, I'm in the South also, I'm in New Orleans, and there's not a lot around here, it's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and just so you all know, Anna Boyer is one of our beloved board directors. Um, so this way we wanted to point you in her direction because um, she is your regional rep. Um, and also, uh, I'll shout out Adam Trott, who is also in here uh, in my ever-shifting participant list, uh, but he dropped his email and phone number, um, so you can reach out to them that way. So, um, yeah, the, any, what other questions are out there? Can I just share? Um, there's a list of resources we just came out with at the Center for Co-ops. That's a list and a map by national and regional and state uh, resources for capital development association statute and um, statutes. So I, that's in the chat. Awesome. Thank you, Esther. Cool. Um, Maddie also dropped in uh, a list by of state by state links about unemployment assistance assistance for freelancers and self-employed. Um, I will say in particular, if you are in, I think it's Maryland, Virginia, DC, um, we actually have a new, um, a new program. Um, it's the Freelancers Co-op Initiative, and that's being run by um, a new staff member, Ajaka Williams, who um, is focused on figuring out how we help um, freelancers to share services and come together. Um, this was set up separately from COVID, but uh, I want you all to know that that's a, that's uh, a program that we're working on. Um, and if you're interested in learning more, particularly about like what we're doing, kind of like in the freelancer gig worker sphere, um, that you can email membership at usworker.com and then we can route you over to Ajaka, who's doing that work. Um, and uh, we're excited about where that will go in the next couple months, because I know a lot of people are going to be kind of like shifting how they do work and where they do work um, in the coming years. So. Um, let me see. Um, any, any other questions that people have? Any other like idle PPP specific questions too? Um, I have a question. I don't want to take up too much space if this doesn't apply to other folks, but, and I know I've asked other U.S. Federation folks before, so again, forgive me if this is taking up too much time on the call, but um, we were lucky enough to get a PPP loan. We're super grateful for that. Um, uh, uh, we are a co-op that's organized as an LLC, and our bank was, our, our lender did accept our K-1 income as being equivalent to payroll, which is great um, for the purposes of receiving the loan, but we haven't been able to get, um, like, 
verification, like validation that they will then accept it as being like forgivable, which it feels confusing to me because it's like, if you've accepted it as like understanding that this is equivalent to payroll for the amount of the loan, then like, wouldn't you, wouldn't then that necessarily be, um, considered forgivable as payroll. And so I'm just curious if other co-ops, other LLC co-ops um, have been navigating this other, um, yeah, or if anybody has gotten any guidance around like what, you know, what co-ops that are not on payroll um, that don't use that structure can do to, to ensure to the best of our ability that our loans are forgivable. Yeah, um, I have an answer and then I'll open it up if there are any other LLC co-ops um, on, the, on the line that, that pay their workers. Um, in in that way to make sure that they're um, forgivable. So um, I talked this over at length <laughs> with um, the PA SBB, one of the PA SBDCs, uh, Small Business Development Centers, um, and um, what? So so if they accepted your loan um, application, then that means they accepted the way that you pay your workers as payroll. So that in of itself should be the indicator. Um, one thing that I, um, I, I, we haven't put together yet because we haven't quite seen the need for it, but it seems like um, for, uh, I don't know, the mental well-being of a lot of our co-ops, it's probably a good idea, um, is we're, we're working on a, just a really short um, MOU um, that, that you can have your lender sign that's that just really quickly says like, hey, we applied with our payroll being used in, in payroll being accounted for in this particular way. Um, and you accepted that loan um, application. So that means that this will be a part, this will be applicable for the forgivable part of the loan. So um, so I, I know that, I forget what co-op it is, but I already said that I would work on this for one co-op in particular this week. So um, I will make sure that that's in our frequently asked questions. And if you um, add your name in the chat, I can make sure to follow up with anybody who also would like that MOU. Um, but I mean, I think that'll be telling, right? So if you just give them a very simple like, uh, like memorandum of understanding that um, ensures that they will in fact forgive this piece of the loan the way that they um, said that they were going to by just accepting your application, then um, that should work. Um, so uh, I, I hope that's helpful. No, and your MOU seems very helpful. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and, and that's the kind of stuff that, like, I love nerdy questions like that. Um, one of the weird side effects of this is I have gotten to get really, really nerdy about, like, uh, how businesses, like, pay their workers, and it's really grown my personal understanding of how you all do your work, which is really great for me and really great for the Federation at large. So um, I will, um, I'll be saving this chat, so I'll make sure to send this to all of you who asked for it, and it'll be in our FAQ, so you can point people that way um, if, if, they, uh, if they aren't on this call. So, um, I'll, you know, I'll just make sure that it's in the, if there's enough people now that I'm just going to make sure it's in the follow-up to this call, so, uh, so you can all see it that way. So, um, that, so um, I will say I got the tip to, to create like a, uh, an MOU like that um, from our uh, local small business development center. So that was the thing that I talked through with them and they said like, you know, if they accepted your application, they should be willing to sign this piece of paper. And if they're not, that's actually a really good sign that you should just like route that money right back to them because what you don't want is for it to go on for like months and months and then have to worry about it later. So at least you know it now. Um, I'm, I am curious if there's any other LLC co-ops that want to chime in with any other, any like directors that they've gotten or um, any other questions in that particular area. Um, this is Anna. I'm, we're an LLC co-op and uh, one of the pieces of advice I heard I put this in the chat is that it's, um, they expect that the forgiveness is going to be based both, both on expenses that were incurred but also paid out during that eight week period. So. Mm -hmm given that there isn't specific guidance on how those that forgiveness will be processed, the best advice I've gotten is to pay, to actually write the checks for the guaranteed payments during that eight week period, rather than waiting quarterly or the end of the year. Try, if you can, try to actually, you know, give, pay the people that money so that you could have a canceled check that matches the expense. That's one thing. 
That's great. That's uh, the the very specific advice that I think um, we definitely needed in this moment. So thanks, Lana. There, there's there's one other piece of advice that we've gotten and that we've been passing on, which is that people put their PPP money into a new and separate account mm -hmm. to make it as easy as possible to track um, all of your expenses. Because the big thing is when you apply for document for um, forgiveness, I think it's going to be to be able to document it. Um, we, uh, we have another question here from Devney, Devney about who to communicate with uh, if your local SBDC isn't answering. Yeah, um, well, I, I started to break it apart a little bit. So um, there, the way that the way that the um, small business support works um, in the U.S. is that like there's the SBA, the Small Business Administration, that's like the federal level um, organization, and then there's SBA district offices, which are regional. There's usually a couple per state, um, and then there's SBDCs, so um, which are there are like thousands of them across the country, and um, maybe hundreds, maybe that's exaggerating. Um, but there are, there are a lot of SBDCs throughout the country and those are basically like the, the really local arm of the, the SBA. So um, if your SBA office isn't returning your calls, that is probably understandable because they're getting a lot of calls from the SBDCs. So I would tell you to call your local SBDC and you can call another one. It doesn't really matter. I have been encouraging people to go to the Temple SBDC open hour, open office hours, which are typically between three o'clock and five o'clock um, on weekdays. And all that information is in our frequently asked questions that we'll send out after this call. Um, but uh, but yeah, I mean, it doesn't really matter necessarily about your region for these particular questions because they're kind of universal. So um, I've been asking our SBDC for to answer questions that would be broadly applicable. So um, I think Kate is adding the link to find your local SBDC. Thanks, Kate. Um, and um, and yet one other thing that I found really useful. So for an organization that's not a worker cob, I, I know them from a from a different route. Um, they actually created like different scenarios and breakdowns of, of their, their PPP loans. So it was basically like, here's what we're giving out in payroll. Here's what we're giving out in, um, in rent or utilities so that they can make sure that they're keeping the percentage needed to get the PPP loan um, applicable. So um, I'm going to be working on um, making a, a template that could be used by any of our co-op members. Um, to be able to track your funds in that way. But absolutely, I think what Maggie was saying is true, is that you should have um, like a separate account just for this money so that you can um, track that and keep that paper trail. It's really, really important to keep a good paper trail. So, um, okay, so that takes us about to time. So thank you everyone. If you have any other questions, um, please feel free to um, reach out to the Federation. Um, you can email us at membership at COVID-19 at or uh, reach out to us via the Federation Slack. Um, as a reminder, your regional reps are here to support you. Um, thanks to Anna for being on this call. She's the Southern rep. Flecker is our Northern rep. Um, and Rana Sufi is our Eastern rep. And Ricardo Nunez is the rep for the West. Um, and um, we also have our member councils where you can find more peer support. Um, as a reminder, our worker call conference is going to be online this fall. Um, we'll have an in-person one and we're excited to see you um, in real life in September or in, in 2021. Um, and uh, that's it, everybody. Um, you'll get the recording uh, link in the next couple of days. And uh, we look forward to um, continuing to support all of you and be working in solidarity with all of you through this, um, sending much love from Philadelphia to everyone all across the country. Thank you. All the love. All Thank the you love. everybody for making time for connecting. Thank you. This was very helpful. Yeah, I think it was